Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is at work. And this is the Vero Engineering Axon, which I was very excited to get to check out. I've been wanting to check out a Vero knife for quite some time. Now, this one was sent to me by a subscriber, and I really appreciate him letting me check out his knife. Now, in return, I, you know, I wasn't able to sharpen it or use it too hard, you know, but I still am able to get a good review on it, and I'm very happy that I got to check it out. You know, but that's just, you know, the nature of the beast, you know, when checking out other people's knives. I can't treat them as my own, you know, it's not like I can sharpen them up, which is a big part of my reviews sometimes. But that does it. that's not everything for the knife, but it is something that like when a company sends me a knife or something like that, I am able to sharpen up the knife, you know, unless if the person, you know, asks me to, you know, and pays me to sharpen their knife or whatever, or if I choose to and they allow me to. But it's nice being able to see how good the heat treat's done, how well it sharpens up, because that's a very important part to having a pocket knife. So I do like to add that into my reviews. In this case, we are not going to be able to do that, but I will still talk about what I think about sharpening this knife. Now, very quickly, three and a half inch blade length, eight inches overall, right around the same length as like a pair of two. Now, if there's any stats you don't get from this video as we move forward, you can look them up on the website. But the, the, the thickness of the knife is right around the same thickness as a pair of two. Now, it is deceiving in some parts because you see how it chamfers down. So it does get thinner in some areas. So when I line it up, like right here, the pair of two is a little thicker. But if I move it back here, it's the same thickness just because of the chamfered edges. This thing does come in many different versions. So it's not like this is the only setup you can have. They have belt satin finishes. They have hand satin finishes like this one. They have micarta, carbon fiber. There's a bunch of different versions. Coated. I think there's coated. Uncoated. This one, however, is the belt satin. M390 belt satin. Sheep's foot blade cross cut carbon fiber which is my favorite kind of carbon fiber it's basically where what you normally know as the sides of the carbon fiber is actually the face of it and it looks beautiful i love the way it looks it really plays with the light and you can really see the fibers running up and down the handle i love seeing that it looks beautiful and then the sides of it is what you normally see the face of the carbon fiber which also looks really cool now this is a liner lock titanium liner lock i'm sorry and it does have the steel lock bar insert and titanium clip titanium backspacer let's get into the the action really quick and then we'll get into the cutting and stuff so the action is really good i mean just phenomenal i really like the action on this knife for the most part i have one little complaint but very very nice action um the whole the the fuller here is nice and sharp so it makes it to where it grips you really nice when you go to deploy it, you know, you can use your nail or your skin. It doesn't really matter because it has that nice edge that really bites you when you want to open it. You can use any part of the fuller for the reverse flick, and it works just nice. The detent is on the lighter side. So it's very easy to slow roll out. You can kind of just slide your finger up this fuller and it actually kind of feels like it's on a track because once you get up to here, then from here over, the fuller traps you. And then so it kind of you kind of follow it around. So if you put your finger there, your thumb there and slide it up, you see how it pops out and then just keep it's almost like you're just pulling your finger in a straight line up. But because once you get to here, the, the fuller just kind of traps you and carries you the rest of the way. So it's actually a very unique feeling. It kind of feels like you're on a racetrack or something. Or like your thumb's on a track. So very nice and you can thumb flick it very easily. I tend to just slide it up and go straight up the fuller. I'm basically just going like this. And then my, my thickness of my thumb kind of pulls it out. 
and the leverage takes over. Now you can go from the side. So the action is very nice. The lock bar, whoops. <laughs> the lock bar you can get to, um, not the best access. We'll talk about that in a minute, but you can get to it pretty easily on this carbon fiber version. So when you unlock it, it drops very nicely and it's extremely smooth. It does have a detent ramp. So if you do hit the detent ball there, you can easily swing past it or just push past it. It's very, very easily. You see the ramp right, right there. This little notch right there is the ramp. So, since it has the ramp, when it does hit that, it doesn't matter. You can swing past it, but usually it doesn't hit that. You usually use this part right here. When you unlock it, it comes down, hits your finger, and then you just let it drop. Or if you use two hands and you unlock it, and you can control it right here with your front, with your pointer finger. It's very fidgety, this knife. And, uh... Very satisfying. Now, this also has a top flipper. Now, it doesn't really look like it, but the jimping is well done, very grippy, and it's a lot easier than you ever would think. I mean, I didn't even know it was a top flipper until I did it, and it's so easy. And for my hands, I mean, it's very easy. Even like this, I mean, it's just incredibly easy. Because, one, the detent is lighter, so since it is lighter, it makes it to where it's not too much effort to pop it out. And since the jimping is grippy, you can kind of just get it right from the front like that and go. Or you can get your finger right there on the front like that. So lots of ways to deploy it. And it works just fine. And it works good. Um, centering, nice and centered. Yeah, nice and centered. <laughs> I had to double check the camera kind of made it look a little off. But yeah, nice and centered. Let's talk about the ergos and for cutting and stuff so the ergos are pretty nice in the hand um i do feel this ramp of the clip everywhere i go but it's still a nice i'm not going to call it neutral because it's not really neutral you do have the swell right here but because you have this platform right here and this little spot right there for your pinky it's kind of neutral you know, you can get a reverse grip and then this pop part right here just kind of, you know, folds right into my hand like I don't really even feel it. So, for popping straps and stuff. But yeah, I like this little spot right there. Very comfortable under my finger and then the jimping is very nice for my thumb. This little spot right here is shaped like your hand where it's smaller. So, since this little tapers there, it really locks your pinky in place and it feels pretty good in the hand. Now, cutting with it cutting with it man this thing cuts really good really really good one you have a good amount of leverage and because the how this is straight right here before it cants down that's a good place for push cuts and cutting with it is really nice it does pass through materials the blade itself passing through materials is really nice the blade stock thickness is 135,000, so a nice strong blade stock but not overly thick but it gets down to about 13 to 15 thousandths behind the edge which is very thin which makes it cut extremely well i mean it separates materials really good i'm really happy with the way it passes through materials the geometry from the spine of the blade down to the edge is a really good it's really good geometry it's a really good taper and that kind of taper makes the materials that you pass through separate very easily now i only used it on cardboard so i can't speak about a bunch of other materials i didn't bring it to work i just used it around the house but it worked very well very happy with the way it separates materials i can't i have no complaints with, with the way it separates and you do have a lot of leverage leverage from the ergos into your cut 
The utility cuts. The utility cuts are really good as well. I'm really happy with the way it, um, you know, the, the tip. It's, it's nice and acute, yet it's a sheep's foot blade. So you have a lot of leverage down into that cut. You have this little spot right back here that's kind of an angle that you can use to push into your palm. I tend to go right over the top of it, honestly. And I just let this part right here push up into this crook of my hand and my finger go over the top. A lot of leverage down in the, into the material and then a lot of leverage pulling back, which makes this thing do utility cuts very, very, very well. I was very happy with how it does utility cuts. It uh, It's definitely going to work for just about anything you can do utility-wise very well, whether it's doing shapes, cutting a straight line. If you need to be able to see the line very well as you're pulling through your cut, you're going to be able to do that because you don't have to be really high into your cuts. You can be nice and low where you get the most amount of leverage into your utility cut. You're going to have all that with this, and it works great. Very happy with the way it does those type of cuts. So push cuts, slicing, and utility cuts very, very well. Now, we'll get back into the blade here in just a second. But first, I want to talk about this clip. The clip works great in and out of the pocket no complaints on how it works in and out of the pocket it has a great amount of tension the lip is big enough to where it goes right over your pants and it might have a little too much lip but it does work really good in the pocket it feels nice and comfortable in the pocket um it's not very heavy but you know regardless of that the clip Hangs on really good and goes over the seam of your pants very well. It's easy to get to. You can easily pull it out, easily deploy it, you know, and get it back in your pocket comfortably. So I like that. I like when a knife can come in and out of the pocket with ease without tearing up the pants. And this one works good. Now, before we get into the bad of the knife, I just want to talk about this blade shape. And you know, a little bit more and like sharpening it and using it because it does have one benefit in my opinion to its uh, shape. So it's a sheep's foot blade shape, but it's not perfectly flat. Okay. Perfect. It has a little bit of belly. If you can see that, see how I can rock it. Well, in return, you're going to get the same amount of leverage down into your utility cuts as you would if it was straight across, but it's going to be a little bit better through cutting and slicing. So it's not perfectly straight, which sometimes what happens is, is when they're perfectly straight, the blade can tend to pull out of the cut. And in this case, it has just that little bit of belly makes a big difference. You'd be surprised on how much that little bit makes a huge difference. Now, when sharpening, if this was a perfectly flat blade, you would have to keep it level on the stone. Nice and level, even if you come, which you're going to have to come off of the stone to get the tip, even if it's perfectly flat. It's just the nature of the beast when sharpening. So you, you have to keep it level even when you, when you uh, get the tip. Now, because this has that little bit of belly, you're not going to have to do that. It's going to be relatively easy. You're going to get the benefits of cutting with it, but it's not going to be harder to sharpen, unlike, say, a recurve, right? Which I don't really mind sharpening recurves, but a lot of people do have problems. Um, so when you're sharpening this, you're just going to have to come off the stone and do a little tiny lift, which in my opinion is easier to do than a fully flat edge. Because a fully flat edge, you have to, you have to be perfectly level through your sharpening the whole time. And with this, I don't have to, I have to hold my angle still with this, just like with sharpening anything when you're putting a bevel on your edge, but I'm not going to have to hold it perfectly level. Even when I'm doing the tip, I'll be able to change that level just a little bit, which actually, in my opinion, and I do a lot of freehand sharpening. Um, I do offer a sharpening service. If you guys ever want to know, it's down in the description. Um, just hit me up on email or through Instagram, but I find it a little bit easier than to do a straight edge. Anyways, so I just wanted to say that you are going to get a little bit of benefits out of the cutting, but it's you're not going to have to sacrifice sharpening. Now, sharpening it, the choil, let's look at the choil. So the plunge grind, it does give you a decent choil. Um, 
right here is where the plunge grind ends, so it starts right here. It ends right there. Now you have from here to the tip of the edge to remove steel. That is the sharpening you have. Now, they didn't give you a lot. Like, it's not like the biggest sharpening choil in the world, but they gave you something. So you do have a bunch of sharpenings to do before you run out of steel to sharpen. Now, when you do, the, the, the stop pin is up here. Good size stop pin. Love the size of the stop pin. Not too small. Nice big stop pin. But it's not in the way. So later on in this knife's life, if it does get sharpened away right here, you'll be able to add in another choil without an issue of it not closing. So that's awesome. Now the grind is nice and thin. So since it is thin, it should be relatively easy to sharpen as well. Now, I did not sharpen it. I can't tell you how the heat treat is. I can't tell you anything like that. I, I would love to, uh, but I, I did not sharpen it. So Now, let's talk about some bad things, and then we'll get back into just a couple more good things to finish this off. One bad thing is this thing does have a light detent. Now, it's not too bad. Like, it's not going to open up in your pocket, you know. But it is relatively light, and I wish it was literally, I mean, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit stronger. Because I don't want it too strong. I like being able to quickly deploy it like that with zero effort. I do like that. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't want it very strong, but just a tiny bit stronger. And I'm not trying to tell anybody to take apart their knives or modify their knives, but if you do know enough about knives or a little bit, you know, about working on knives a little bit, that wouldn't be very difficult for you to do yourself at home. Not telling you to do anything to your knife. I'm just saying. Next thing, the ramp on this clip is very, very proud. It stands very tall. Now that in return works really good in and out of the pocket, but in my hand, every grip I have, I feel it. Whether it's in this grip, it's on this little bone. If I hold it down here, now it's on this bone. If I hold it all the way up here, now it's like right on this one. So it's just a little too proud for me. I wish it was just a little bit shorter. Uh, I love the way it goes in and out of the pocket, so I really appreciate it in a lot of ways. But in the hand, it does kind of get annoying. Now, even in the reverse grip, when I go like this, my finger lands right on it. So, you know, and if I'm down here, you know, so it's just one of those things. You know, either my fingers are landing on it or it's landing on a bone. It's doing something. And that's in my hands. It might not be that way in yours. So, you know, this is my complaints. Next thing, the access to the lock bar could be a little bit better. Now, it's not as bad as I heard that the, the micarta version is. And I've seen this before in knives where one knife, the same knife, One's in micarta, one's in carbon fiber, one's in G10, and one of them is just horrible for the lock bar axis, you know, because of the materials made out of. Um, I recently experienced that. And in this case, I hear that the, the micarta version is really bad to get to, to get the access to the lock bar. And I am a stickler for access to the lock bar. Now, in this case, with the carbon fiber one, it's not horrible. It's not that bad. I can actually get to it relatively easily. Now, I would appreciate a little bit of access right here. So, cutting this back just a little bit and maybe cutting this back just a little bit. Or one or the other, you know. And this one, like I said, isn't bad. So, I, I don't, I'm not hating on this one too much. But I do know the Mike Carter version is not that great. Uh, my friend's got one and, you know, and I trust what he says very, very much. So next thing, the, the finish on the, the pivot, right? I understand that the screws, and they are all T8s, by the way, which I'm happy to see. So thank you, Vero, for doing T8s all the way around. Love that. But you see how they're shiny? Now, so is the pivot, which is fine, you know, and it matches, but the backspace are stonewashed, the clip is stonewashed, the blade is satin, and then these are kind of shiny, 
Like, they're a little bit satin, but in return, basically, what I'm trying to get to is that they scratch very easily. If you look really closely here, you'll see that it does get scratched up easily because it's shiny. Now, if it was this stonewashed, it wouldn't do that. So I would just appreciate if these were stonewashed too. It would put the whole thing together really good. Now, the shiny screws, you know, they're not going to really get scratched up too much. But same thing, you know, just make them all kind of blend in rather than having the hardware stand out as being shiny. It's not that big of a deal. Now, this next thing is not a complaint on the knife. This is just a thing that you have to deal with when dealing with hand satin blades. So with hand satin blades, you see that the satin is going this way, not this way like a belt satin. A belt satin would be like the PM2. You see how it's going up the blade? Well, in this case, it's going this way, right? So since it's like that, when you use it, the scratches you get from cutting are going to go up the blade, which are going to be a little bit more visible. Like if you look at the tip right here, you see how you see that little scratch right there? Or, you know, maybe in a couple other places. That's just, go that's just the nature of the beast with a hand satin finish. No complaints on the hand satin finish. I'm just saying that is something you have to deal with. If you get a hand set and finish. Um, but really, all in all, that's really all the bad. It, it's, you know, and I'm nitpicking in some of the ways, but it's a good knife. It's a great knife. I'm very happy w that I got to check it out. Um, there's um, the finish work on this thing is done very well. The action is really nice. My focus, man. So, so all in all, I'm really happy with this knife, and I know some of the things I complained about were nitpicks. Now I might have um, some more, some better things to say, you know, if I would have sharpened it and felt the heat treat and stuff like that, um, or you know about the grind and stuff. It looks relatively even, um, but it's hard to say without sharpening it. Um, and you know, I didn't use it enough to really get any damage to the edge or anything in order to really need to resharpen it. So it's hard for me to say how the steel feels, but all in all, it's a great knife. It is an awesome knife. I do like it a lot. Um, I can appreciate it. Um, it's definitely very useful and the action is amazing. It's put together very nice. There's no play from any direction. I appreciate the T8s. I appreciate the nice, good stop pin. The action is really good. Even though my, that one little complaint about the detent being a little stronger, it's not that big of a deal. The action is great. So, you know, my little nitpicks are really not a big deal. It doesn't take anything away from this knife. Now, this knife is not cheap. It is made by Best Tech, by the way. I think it was two hundred and eighty dollars. I think if I'm not, if I'm correct, Best Tech does make these, and I think they're going to be able to start producing bigger batches um, because in the past they weren't able to get very many out to the public. So there were a lot of people wanting them that were not able to get them. Beautiful knife. I'm very happy to have gotten to check it out. Sorry the video is so long. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.